running a skeleton crew today because uh, two of our board members are celebrating Yom Kippur, so Yom talk to those. Um, item number B is the agenda. Um, I have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, number C uh, is Question the from the public? Comment from the public? The agendas that you are publishing are bare bones. They don't really uh, uh, meet the requirements set out uh, by law to describe the items within. And so uh, that coupled with your new uh, bare bones uh, report on the uh, agenda, whatever, minutes, uh, there is very little information for the public. I am asking you to fulfill your duties as representatives of the people and make sure that the people are informed of what happens here. That's all. Um, moving on to item C, which is the consent calendar. We are approving the draft minutes of regular board meeting of September the 10th, as well as bills pay um, all in one scoop. Um, I don't think the board members have any questions because we should have consulted the district manager. I also urge the public to do so if you have any questions on the um, bills pay. Um, it's best answered when they actually have the information in front of them and can answer your questions. Um, so, um, are there any public comments on the consent calendar? Stephen? Yeah, um, once again, we're missing detail on the consent calendar. We don't have an idea of the revenues. There has been a revenue stream eliminated from the district, which was not prior to discuss, discussed prior to uh, deciding it in April of this year uh, after the attempted rape. Um, and so we really don't know much about the financial condition unless we have uh, a good idea of what the cash flow is. That means inflows as well as outflows. Um, there are details needed in some of these items. I'm going to skip it for now. Thank you for your opinion, Stephen. Um, I have a motion to so, approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number D is the public comment open time for items not on the agenda. I see new faces and I welcome your presence. Thank you for joining us. If you um, are here to comment on the JPA, hold your comments until um, item E1, which is that. Other than that, I'm opening the floor to the public comment and I see Stephen raising his hand. Go ahead, Stephen. Okay. I'm going to turn around because this is being recorded and I want to talk to the public. I'm here tonight to pursue my rights as a citizen to observe what's going on tonight. We have a, a police officer in the corner. He's acting professional and what have you. But the reason why he's here is because they're, they, this board right here is more concerned about conduct in this meeting than they are about the attempted rape that happened not, not more than a hundred yards from here. Um, I think it's an outrage. They're spending money on, on, on uh, protection that is not necessary and they are completely ignoring uh, protection that would be useful such as video surveillance, enhanced uh, security patrols, that sort of thing. Um, thank you for your opinion, Stephen. For future reference, the uh, public comment is when you address the board, not the public. So well, I was addressing the board as well as the public. I would appreciate if you turn around and actually face us when you address us. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Thank you. Um, item number E is the... Um, Resolution 2019-07, authorizing the Maryland Community Services District's participation 
in the Joint Exercise of Powers Agreement to participate in and form the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority. This is an action item and um, the board will um, hear an introduction. Uh, we will then have some technical questions if there are some from the board. We will then um, open it to public for comment and um, later we will proceed with the motions. So, um, would that be Chief or you, Eric? Uh, well, just to start, and I'll certainly turn it over to Chief Barry as well as uh, Chief Minister uh, here as well. I uh, want to just point out that you did, I did receive a correspondence last evening um, that I did forward onto the board. Also, last evening, I do have copies of it here if anybody would like some. Uh, they are there and available. Um, I just want to acknowledge that they were sent and received by the board, um, and the person who sent them was received a uh, confirmation that they were shared with all of you, uh, including the two board members who are not present this evening as well. Um, with that said, I think mean, it was probably best served if I turn this over to Chief Gray and allow him to uh, do some more things. Okay. Thank you, uh, President Perry, members of the board, and. Uh, community that's here. I'm also joined by uh, Battalion Chief uh, Neil from the uh, County of Marin Fire Department and as a follow-up with last month, um, we're presenting to you some updates to the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority and our action requested is to approve uh, the resolution uh, to join the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority and request that the County of Marin place the parcel tax measure on the March 3rd, 2020 ballot. Um, I think it's notable that we're in the midst of a, a red flag alert uh, that is encompassing uh, more than a, a 10 counties um, and a public safety power shutoff uh, that uh, sometime this morning, uh, later, later this evening, early this morning, will likely affect over a million people, 10,000 of which are in the county of Marin. Um, one of the uh, advances and enhancements uh, to the response from the fires in 2017, the North Bay fires, uh, was pre-positioning of fire apparatus. We're also in the midst of that occurring and it was approved in our end. So there are two strike teams that are uh, forming up within an hour uh, that will be available uh, within the county, including uh, OES uh, 358 that will be staffed by three San Rafael and one Marinwood firefighter, along with uh, nine other uh, engines in addition to two water tenders and also uh, the availability of additional dispatch uh, personnel for what we expect uh, could be an event. And the purpose of that is to be able to respond uh, quickly um, with additional resources, which I think is really interesting timing, but it tells you about what we're facing today. Not something individually, but things that are collectively facing uh, Northern California in this case. At the same time, there is a, a large scale uh, event going on in Southern California with what they call uh, Santa Ana winds. So we're all in this together. We're continuing to experience the hottest months and days on record. Um, and it's going to take some time to address this. Um, and Marin alone, it's been said that it taken 135 years to create the vegetation uh, that we have uh, that has been absence of fire that occurred naturally uh, to burn that vegetation and allow it to restore itself along with uh, increased population and suppression activities um, it's definitely a long-term investment that I believe strongly uh, we need to address here collectively the um, Three primary goals of the JPA are to get people out alive, protect their home from being destroyed by fire, and create a resilient landscape that will reduce the fire's intensity. Fourteen years ago, Marin started out on the path of creating a, a fire plan, and subsequently, um, three supporting documents were created a community wildfire protection plan that we discussed last month, a lessons learned report from the North Bay fires, and then the most recent uh, grand jury report in 2019 that actually called for the creation of a JPA where all the agencies could work together on prevention. We do a fantastic job of responding reactively on an emergency basis, but where we really need to do work is before the fire that's occurred. So over the last year, the fire chiefs and um, 
city and town managers have worked to develop the JPA, and there have included over 40 public meetings to gather feedback and input from councils, boards, and various stakeholders. It should be noted right up front, you know, this is a, um, a collaborative effort and there are compromises. So, you know, not all parties are getting what they receive, but we're confident that it will address the need that is so uh, important. The JPA is being presented to you, we believe, is thoughtful, legally sound, and again, collaboratively developed. I want to cover just some of the changes that have resulted from public input. And uh, Chief Neal is going to walk us through uh, the uh, PowerPoint presentation that we have. We're going to use the handout. But representation from all member agencies and governance uh, and operations levels, which means there are 19 uh, separate agencies. All will be represented both on a governance board and an operational level. Uh, there's going to be strong citizen oversight with a requirement for an annual public report, not only on finances, which is typically done, but on work plans. What have you set out to accomplish and what have you actually accomplished? And then we'll re return to source funding within geographical areas. So 80% uh, over a five-year period, and I included a map in the um, report provided to the board that shows the outline of the five areas. But I think, as you know, they mirror our paramedic service area, which includes Marin Wood, CSA 13, CSA 19, and the city of San Rafael. That encompasses our overall area. And for the most part, um, what this um, return to source funding will guarantee that 80% of all of the revenue derived in that area will be returned directly. And the benefit here is that that's going to occur in each one of the areas. So regardless of jurisdictional boundaries, we're going to see results, and I believe they'll be significant. The length of the measure has been uh, talked about by several of, of the, not only the agencies, but also stakeholders. So this is something that is you know, not a capital improvement. There's a maintenance of effort required here. So unlike a building or a bridge or a roadway, um, it is not a one-time need, it's ongoing. And the other effect, and we're seeing it again um, over the next several days, and we saw it over the weekend, is clim climate change is real, and it seems to be increasing at an alarming rate. Um, some up-to-tax language was included, which allows the Board of Supervisors to lower the tax when a maintenance mode is reached. Um, there's five-year extensive reviews and an opportunity for changes and realignment. And then every 10 years, a public hearing in front of the Board of Supervisors to determine if a repeal or a change should uh, go before the voters. Three people can place this in front of voters versus a large number of petitions. And sometimes you've seen some modern language that puts measures in place that until repealed by voters. It takes quite a bit to actually do that, a referendum process and a petition with could be thousands of voters required. This action will take just three members of the Board of Supervisors and it will be reviewed every 10 years. Polling examples that were based on solid, significant statistical experience uh, globally and across the state. So there was good data uh, that went into the evaluation. The organization cost was included early in the process and provided valuable information, and most of their recommendations were included and are addressed. Um, there was also a strong COC uh, with representation from a taxpayer group annual RIP report required and uh, reviewing the work uh, and the financials that went into this. So it also should be understood that, that while this is uh, a new concept regarding fire prevention, and to me, well overdue. There have been successful JPAs operating in Marin, probably transparently, right around us. Um, both Marinwood and San Rafael have been participating in a hazardous materials JPA for over 25 years. Um, that allows us to provide uh, response-related services when no one agency can do that alone. So there are technicians that are trained and prepared in a vehicle and all of that. And obviously, we're part of a, a local um, um, JPA when it comes to uh, medical services, as are some other ones in the county. 
Uh, many of you have received correspondence from special interest groups, including POSP, and also, as was mentioned by Eric CWP. Um, there have been a large number of those groups, and um, they've taken a pretty hard stance on some of the extensive involvement in communication that they feel is important and needed. And I think that we've had to realize one key word to make this successful across essentially 19 agencies, and that's compromise in order to have this collaborative effort. And it's important to understand we're balancing really a singular tax issue while addressing a long-standing community safety need that none of us individually either can or have been able to address on our own. So we believe that the JPA includes an, an extensive checks and balances, and the survey results that we received from thousands of residents in Marin um, were very obvious and were unambiguous. Marin voters stated they prefer an ongoing funding source to something that is either nine or 18 years in duration. The supporting levels vary by over 10 percentage points, which is well outside of the margin of error for the survey. Um, and I think that's the only single concept of talking about in this 10-year sunset. Um, this is well beyond the 10-year plan that's going to take us. It took up more than 135 years to get us into this predicament. It's going to take us more than 10 to resolve it. And I would hope that a single issue has been as represented as CWP and others are talking with all the boards. All of them are receiving the same letters that we, we don't allow this to hold up the progress, I think, that we've made. Um, with the current investment that all of us have in both our lives and our property and the watershed here, it's important to protect it. And I think this effort uh, that's coordinated amongst all agencies is certainly our best opportunity to do that. Um, it should also uh, be noted that many homeowners are being impacted by something we're receiving calls on almost daily, and that's of the loss of their insurance. Uh, we're, and we're talking about fire insurance with either non-renewals or just outright cancellations in the midst of an insurance period. Now, it's something we're working closely with individual residents on, but this effort is just another example that I think in strength in numbers that's going to fortify our ability to really address that. Because um, what we can do here is obviously very limited. Um, but I think that force multiplier effect of everyone working together consistently towards this effort will have significant outcomes. Um, Chief Neal, well, why don't we walk through the PowerPoint? Okay. So everyone has a copy of it. the JPA's mission is to fund and oversee a program 
where 60% of the funding would go to a core program of working on wildfire detection and evacuation system improvements, vegetation management, fire hazard reduction, um, um, providing funds for grants, public education, and neighborhood wildfire preparedness. So, and then 20% uh, of the funds would go to funding uh, defensible space and home hardening evaluations, money for seniors and those with access and functional needs who cannot uh, perform their own defensible space. And 20% of the funding would come back to deal with local fire prevention issues. So funds, 20% of those funds would come back specifically to your CSD to deal with fire prevention issues that you have here in Marinwood. And that's around $65,000, I believe. Um, and so uh, we know that there are many um, improvements and studies and traffic planning and such that we need to address our evacuation systems, studies to figure out where we have choke points, where we can utilize things like contraflow to help uh, access and egress for emergency responders. Uh, certainly, um, you have vegetation management issues here around Marinwood, and um, so fire hazard reduction work is definitely needed, and certainly the opportunity to have grants for those who need assistance is important. So the 20% the of the funding that went to defensible space and home hardening, um, Marinwood could decide to uh, take the funds and implement inspections themselves, or you could have the JPA do that work. So that portion of the program, you have a choice to basically opt in, opt out. So again, over uh, since we were here last, we had, had just uh, been able to get the video up and going. So there's a website that's got the video. There's a lots of background documentations documents that uh, Chief Gray spoke about, the Community Wildfire Protection Plan, the Grand Jury Report, the Lessons Learned Report from the North Bay Fire, as well as frequently asked questions, a variety of information. And so as Chief Gray summarized some of the areas where we um, um, took the governance uh, or the feedback to the fire chiefs and town managers to revise the JPA was focused on governance and that's where we went from 11 board of directors to 19 assistance oversight committee talked about the length of the measure and so there is a finalized JPA I believe you have a copy um, and there were just some uh, amendments done last week so uh, we know governance and the citizens oversight group was a big deal as well as the length of the term so um, one of the big things was obviously expanding the board to 19 members um, and there would be the approval and requirement of both the majority of that 50 percent of that board as well as also includes a population weighting so that there would be um, good balance on the board for voting. Um, there were there are programmatic reviews, very extensive every five year reviews where there can be adjustments to the program proportions. Um, it also includes an up to in the parcel tax language. So if it's up to 10 cents per square foot uh, for the living structure, whereas um, um, if it were, if the, if there weren't, if you didn't need all of those funds, they could adjust down the square footage uh, tax, so it could be less. So that's uh, something that can happen every five years. Uh, we talked about the Citizens Oversight Committee, um, nine members from five of the zones. They'd be members of the taxpayer group, um, environmental group, fire prevention, nonpartisan civic organizations. They would self-identify to the board and um, be put together on the, the COC. And, um, and then as Chief Gray mentioned, um, every 10 years there would be a public hearing that would um, go in front of the Board of Supervisors if there was a, a need to change or repeal the parcel tax. But that can be done fairly easy, uh, whereas getting a lot of petitions to do that would be difficult. Okay, so the, the structure is a board of directors of 19 people. I am on 
um, the diagram slide here. Uh, 19 folks um, made up of elected, and uh, there would also be an operations and budget staff that would also be made at the 19 folks on those uh, same um, uh, zones and agencies. And then a technical advisory committee with could be as many as 19 people as well. And that's where we see where there would be a, a lot of work by that group and kind of digging into the weeds of some of the project proposals. They would assist with some of the prioritization of projects by zone. Um, that group would be made up of certainly partnering stakeholders, could be environmental groups, could be land managers, it could be pg &E, other subject matter experts, those who make sense um, that we would work with on any of these kinds of projects. So um, a pretty large group, but um, everyone wanted to be part of it, and that's uh, kind of what they, they heard from input. And then the map, these are the operational zones. These are exactly the same operational zones in which we operate the paramedic authority, um, basically um, West Marin and the pink, the green up top is Novato, we've got Central Marin, um, San Rafael, and Southern Marin. Rolling over to the program funding, we talked about those core, the core uh, program where 60% of the funds would go to improvements to wildfire detection and evacuation system improvements, um, the fire hazard reduction work, that's the on the ground work with whether it be hand crews, fire crews, equipment, goats, chipper programs, the whole gamut of options are there. And that's where a lot of our work needs to be done, obviously, in Marin. And then money for grants, funds for public education, likely through Fire Safe Marin to help us with that. And then the, the uh, defensible space evaluations, 4.2 million there. Marin would, uh, this portion would be about 65,000 of that. Again, you could choose to do the evaluations or um, have the JPA do that work for you. And then, um, again, uh, uh, $65,000 would be your 20% of that local fund that could be used in fire prevention projects here in your service district. So we'll move into um, the structure of what the parcel tax looks like. It's up to 10 cents per building square foot. Improved residential and commercial uh, units. Um, there's a charge for multi unit residential um, complexes that have three or more units. That would be $70, $75 per unit. And then um, some uh, unapproved parcels, certainly uh, up to a quarter acre would be $25 per parcel. And then for the quarter acre to half acre, $100, and then half acre to greater, $150 uh, flat parcel fee. And then exemptions, the standard exemptions for senior low income folks, as well as exemptions for churches and other uh, uh, typical um, tax exemption uh, items. And then uh, the inflation rate adjustment based on the Bay Area CPI. So, let's see. So, again, we've talked a little bit about the mandatory fiscal accountability with not only the Citizens Oversight Committee, but those check-ins every five years, an extensive um, look at the financials and where program adjustments could be made if, if there needed to be some scaling down of the tax or um, rearrangement. And then, certainly, um, reporting of the financials and there would certainly be a prioritized annual work plan and budget that would be very public. Um, and then this last page is just an example of what the, the language would say in terms of the ballot language. And we're limited to 72 words, I believe, so um, that's been drafted. So then what's happening now um, as we I close out with the timeline and next steps, you know, this month uh, we've been going to all the 19 agencies again, or the 18 agencies, and asking them to pass a resolution requesting the Board of Supervisors to place this initiative on the March 2020 ballot. And then uh, November, the Board of Supervisors would consider that request to put on the ballot. 
and then uh, March 3rd, 2020 would be the election. So basically your board's being asked to put this in front of the voters. Um, the democratic and public dialogue will allow voters to make some informed um, decisions about this uh, JPA. Um, certainly, as Chief Gray mentioned, our current investments cannot bring our communities in Marin to a safe place where a fire chief is still comfortable. That's why they're here. That's why they're doing this. And we are getting a ton of uh, requests. The public is demanding that we do more to protect them. And so this is that. So with that, questions? And I'll just oh, add one thing. Um, at the County of Marin, Lake and Hollow Fire District, Muir Beach uh, Community Services District, Stinson Beach Fire District, Inverness Public Utility District, Novato Fire District, Town of Fairfax, and the City of Larkspur, as of last Friday, have all uh, approved the JPA and uh, a resolution uh, to send it to the Board of Supervisors to put it on the one track. As amended. As amended. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chief, for your presentation. You. Um, at this point, I uh, will take technical follow-up questions from the board. Jeff, would you like to start? I'd be happy to. Okay. Um, thank you once again for your presentation. Um, you know, I've certainly been, been attending one meeting and then the uh, two presentations that you've given in this room um, come to understand the criticality of this program and um, how much it, how badly it's needed in our county. I do have some questions. Um, one of them has to go back to um, the fact that when this measure goes in front of the voters, it's going to require a two-thirds majority in order to pass. Um, it seems that in this environment, with as many competing tax measures and the history of tax measures, um, which are already on the books, uh, everything that we can do in order to make this palatable to the voters, um, we should take a good close look at. Um, in California Code 6510, you're given the opportunity to either put a term limit, to either put a term limit on this agreement or basically have it open-ended. So I guess my first question is, I'm sure you know that, and what was the thought process about not putting the term limit on it? So um, some of the polling um, represented um, a, a eight and a 19-year term, and the polling results, um, there was I believe a almost 10 percentage points difference between a an 8, 19, and until repealed by voters. So um, some of the discussions that the group had, you know, they're really um, looking at the the polling results and the the, the uh, supporting comments, and so they stuck with um, until repealed by voters. Um, because the 8 and the 19 uh, didn't have enough to pass the measure when it was, when the time frames were set there. Okay. And there was like a 10% increase in uh, the difference. Okay. Percentage point. I see. I'm still not the greatest person on the poll <laughs> results, but maybe Chief Gray can no, that's, add on that's to that. A, that's accurate. Um, it, it pulled much higher and actually it didn't pass at lower levels. So I think the public and what was taken by the pollster um, was the only effective way to do this was um, an, ongoing, an ongoing effort and ongoing task. I see. Okay. Um, I want to make sure I understand what you said earlier. It's, I think what I read, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that um, in order to repeal this at some point in time, you would require only three board a supervisor. of supervisors, correct? Okay. Yeah. And instead of thousands of signatures to get something put on the ballot, correct. is that, is that correct. what you're saying? Okay. Yes. I see. Okay. Um, again, my point is simply, what are you going to? What can we do to make sure 
that if this does go on the ballot, that it has a good chance of, of passing. And I think, you know, honestly, a number of government agencies and even non-governmental agencies who give themselves raises every once in a while or add fees, yeah. um, there is a voter sensitivity to perpetuity and, and some ongoing governmental or quasi-governmental agency who can tax them. So, okay. Um, let's see. Would it be true that the vast majority of the expenditures in this program are going to be um, payroll related, i.e. human resource related? Is there going to be an enormous amount of capital um, or infrastructure um, expenditures? How does that shake out? So I believe the administrative cost maximum is 10%. And there costs. would be no pensions, there would be the opportunity for the JPA to hire part-time people or contract for services. Uh -huh. They could come yeah. to San Rafael and go, can you, you know, provide a, an HR person or a financial auditor and they'll pay for it, but uh, there would be no... a contractor as opposed to an employee of the That's employer. correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, understood. Thank you for uh, clarifying about pensions. Um, <laughs> no pensions. <laughs> understood. Okay. Um, the other thing that, um, about the oversight committee, um, there were some opinions, again, um, about staggering the uh, positions so that they wouldn't all come do it once or they you know they would be limited in how long they could serve but that was not considered either oh the citizens oversight committee um they can build those bylaws they're not yet built so uh, that's all open oh, it um absolutely it's just that there, there will be one yeah there will be a citizens oversight group and they'll have to come together and work with the board and then come up with so the board is staggered as of now according to the jpa because uh, I remember reading something about staggering and then so it's more of a citizen oversight. I have a recommendation. That they would uh, and they could fulfill that by writing the bylaws. Right, I understand. Okay, very good. For now, I think I'm finished. I'm gonna regroup. Oh, okay. You touched on the salaries already, so that was my big slide. Um, and the fact that it is open ended is something that is very, very difficult to swallow being a homeowner myself in San Rafael and in Ravenwood. Um, <clears throat> I, I just have a 10% going to administrative, is that what I heard? Mm -hmm. So that's two million, that's kind of a lot, isn't it? Well, we, uh, the work is not, in it. it's not cheap work. Um, uh, so contracting right now is running for contracting just to uh, reduce vegetation along one mile of road in Marin for evacuation rock clearance is running about $55,000 a mile. Um, the work's not cheap um, and a lot of it would be contracted. Um, so um, as well as, you know, use of equipment, contracting equipment, buying equipment, whatever is needed. Um, I think for the first uh, couple of years, we have one heck of a lot of miles of road to clear back the vegetation on our primary and secondary evacuation routes. So we figure a lot of it's going to be contracted. Is that part of the uh, program? That's part of the core program. Yeah. Yeah. And if, in addition to the fiduciary responsibility, we need to do this in, in an efficient and effective manner. So um, I think they'll be fully transparent. So um, the better we can reduce cost yeah. and, and minimize any overhead, that's exactly what we're going to do. We we're interested in results here and in improving the safety to the community. Right. Um, the 65,000 that's coming back to Marinewood. For low part of low the, yeah. yeah, the defensible space evaluation, that's what you were talking about. So there's two parts of that. that 4.2 million, our portion is 65,000. Yeah, for the local, yeah. The, right. the money that could come back to Marinwood right. would, would be 65,000 approximately. And that's the, the yeah. Two separate things. Yeah, they're two separate things. So 
defensible space evaluations are, are going to happen. We're going to have field crews that we'll be able to put in place that we currently do not have right. at all. Um, we'll be able to put those in place, but this 20% factor or that 65,000 in the landlord's case would be discretionary. The money would come directly to us to use for projects that we think are critically important within the district. And I, I might have been confusing when I was talking about the, the defensible space part of it. Giving us an option of being to able to okay. utilize the JPAs and inspection field teams or hire our own. I can tell you from my experience, and, and right. the, several of the agencies have been operating like this, it will be likely far more cost effective yeah. and without bringing on any additional employees or liability to utilize the JPA for those services. And a large and better economy of scale, and it's great that we'll be doing because we'll be sharing the same employees within the CSAs and San Rafael. So essentially, you're going to have then again, you know, fires in these circumstances don't know boundaries. So we'll be having the ability to work literally, you know, across the street from each other, and having that same person being able to coordinate the inspection activity versus having. One person from one agency right. doing that across the street and one doing the other side of the street, maybe or maybe not. Right. My, my only thinking is, is that 65,000 Marinwood as a district, we aren't spending anywhere near that for fire prevention and things like that because it's just not we there. Don't have it. Yeah. But we also are concerned about the open space. Well, up, up in the hills, Queenstone especially, that fire road's been groomed the best I've, in 25 years since yes. I've been around the here, it's the best. Yeah. But there's still piles and piles and piles of fuel up there that is just sitting around and it's been up there for years. I mean, trees that are down just cut up into piles, set aside never been cleared out or burned during the, during the winter like we used to do. It's a great project. Ago. It's a great project and we've got a plan for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I was just wondering because yeah. the 65,000 won't go very far trying to get rid of everything up there. No, and that's where, the again, that fourth well, that's multiplier. Every year. That's every Again, you have that every year, but the the additional effort and, and what's the, the category of the 60%, that's a category that we're not talking about. Okay. That's where that kind of work yeah, is actually absolutely. going to occur mm -hmm. with fire and fuels crews working in yep. that area right. to mobilize that. Yep. 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 Thank you. You bet. Um, so a couple of follow-up questions for me. Um, the first one is just to clarify for myself more probably than everybody else. There are three separate buckets. One is the 60%, the biggest one, that will be the bulk of money that will be spent on vegetation management predominantly and other projects. The second bucket will be the 20% uh, of the funding uh, dedicated to defensible space and home hardening evaluations and senior grants. And that's the part where we could opt in or opt out as a, as a district yeah. to participate in the JPA. Then there is um, a third bucket of 20%, which would be dedicated to the local project. Um, and I'm assuming that would assume our decision making, our leadership on what it is, but also us contracting out for the execution. Um, and okay, so that I'm super clear now on. Thank you. Um, the next one is um, none of the uh, directors on the board or um, committee members, etc., would be compensated, would they? Well, it's not written into the JPA, but other JPAs do pay compensation for. Uh, I understand that they do. I'm not. I believe you guys can discuss that as the board of directors can make that determination when the board comes together and establishes? So it is up to the JPA's board to determine their compensation? I think it could be a discussion item. I'm not sure. Such as a meeting statement? Yeah. Is, is that basically yes. what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just limited to that. Well, we, we are um, offering... Volunteers? Yeah. yeah. 
our that's a good paychecks are oh, really yes. fast. We got a 10% raise last year. There are also other smaller districts yeah, like in the same dollars. situation, yeah. like your beach and. Um, so overall, I think that you know I, this is a tremendous opportunity for us to be part of um, a joint effort that gives us access to um, to tools, equipment, expertise that we would never be able to afford as a district. So I think you know many people agree that this is. A, a very necessary um, effort, and um, I think that the conversation that happened is actually a, a good one to have. You know, the, the taxpayers groups, the other groups, to kind of contribute to to this um, hashing out of ideas, because only this way we can ensure as wide of a support for the measure as possible. And I want to applaud you for listening to them and incorporating the feedback and not giving up just yet, but really continue to engage with them and make sure that this um, compromise, as you said, com compromise is never 100% happy for everybody. That's not what compromise is. But if, if we can really you know, marry as many people as possible in this happy union, that would, I think, be um, preferred. And for me, um, what didn't really make sense um, was the uh, Citizens Oversight Committee, um, the fact that they would be appointed by the board members. Not appointed, they would self-identify to the board so they, from those zones so they'll know who wants to participate. And then um, but somebody would have to appoint them. If, if there are five <coughs> different people who are running from Marinwood, then who would be the deciding? I would guess that you're, uh, you would get some input from your, your CSD board. And just to no, so, OK, so it would be actually filtered through each agency. And then each agency would appoint one member. I, but that's the board. That's not the citizens committee. So. I don't think all the details are are um, laid out, like bylaws of elections or any of that kind of. I think that's all still open um, about how. I just know that they're supposed to be self-identified from those zones. Um, of you know, hey, I'm I want to be on the citizens oversight group, and if you have five or six of them, you can only have you know one from each zone. Or I'm I'm not. Sure, how exactly they're. Yeah, it's laid out in section eight oh. of the agreement. Right, that's so, where I'm actually yeah, referring yeah, to. Yeah, the five participants um, from the five general geographical yeah. areas, and then participant from a taxpayer or organization, an environmental organization, fire safe Marin, or similar fire. Right, organization. but it says in the sentence below the board of directors shall appoint participants to citizens' oversight committee. As set forth below. From those groups and from the five zones. So the assumption here is that, for example, a taxpayer organization of Marin County will come to an agreement and appoint one person to be participant on and the EPA. Right, and I think ultimately it's, we weren't trying to name just one specific, right, broad right. enough right. so that then, then the um, Board of Governors could decide who would represent that. And it was likely to, um, probably be rotational as well, so depending on... Again, I, I, I think it should be made clearer to the voters that the Citizens Oversight Committee does not um, uh, report to the Board of Directors. That right. it is it really... Stand an, alone. Right? Mm -hmm. It's an oversight yeah, committee. That's, 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 that's how it's shown. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, from, from the text, only I got the impression that it was the Board of Directors, Citizen Oversight Committee, and other committees. Uh, the graphic shows it equal. Oh, um, I know it's dotted. It's a dotted line. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> I'm just, yeah. right? Uh, and the, the word oversight, to me, being English second language you know, person, um, implies that someone oversees the board. So therefore, the Oversight Committee is actually more of a higher office, uh, or, or maybe independent. more independent, thank you. Independent. Right. 
Yeah. Well, and because they, they, they can create subcommittees that actually monitor the board of uh, directors, you know, the governing board and everything um, associated with that. So that's, but at some point, yeah, that was really my biggest beef with the um, write-up. And you answered um, my other question about the sunset clause, because that was also one. Uh -huh. um, but if, if the polling research shows that you are actually maximizing the likelihood of success by putting it in perpetuity, <coughs> who am I to question that? Um, and then again, the addition of the ability to review it um, every 10 years and repeal it or modify it as necessary. I like the idea also that the um, Board of Supervisors has the right to, to dissolve the JPA right. um, if they decide that it's not... Um, it's sort of its purpose. Yeah, but we know um, that we grow. <laughs> right. And again, this is only going to be... Uh, if in fact the voters support this. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So again, thank you so much for your tremendous work. Thank you, uh, directors, for your comments. And now we'll open it to public comments. So please raise your hand. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, my name is Janice Rapalas. I live in the Ringwood, not far from here. And I am a member of the Citizens for Wildfire Preparedness. I am asking uh, Board of Directors to include two elements that are in the public interest in um, voting tonight. They address the necessary controls on the expenditure of public money. To do this, I'm requesting that you adopt the two amendments that I provided earlier today. Um, so substituting the language in Section 8 and Section 21 of the JPA Agreement. We are asking for a Citizens Oversight Committee that has more authority to oversee the activities of the JPA. The COC, as, as written in the current JPA agreement, has little power to provide effective feedback to the public. They would be uh, reporting back to the Board of Directors rather than directly to the public. Further, to ensure that the oversight is truly independent, the CLC should have the power to select its own members so that the possibility of cronyism and patronage is avoided. Additionally, we consider it to be essential that the public has the power to determine whether the new agency is effective by providing a sunset of 10 years on the tax funding measure. Currently, the Board of Supervisors can review after 10 years, but really, do we think that the Board of Supervisors would not want to keep a tax bringing in that kind of money in force? The public needs protection. These changes will make it more likely that the public will approve the measure, especially when there are a number of significant tax measures for them to vote on this next year. Um, I do support, and our committee supports, the formation of the JPA uh, we've spent many hours as well studying it and um, studying um, fire. Um, and I do thank the firemen and police in our, in our county for their, their service. Uh, I know there have been many compromises and I am coming to you representing the uh, Citizens for Wildfire Preparedness with the comments I've made. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone uh, my name is Robin Geary. I live in Marinwood, and um, I have two points that I just would like to address. Um, the um, the idea that it needs a, an end date, well, that's uncomfortable to all of us. Um, nobody mows the lawn just once, and it's taken care of. Um, the, the hills are going to grow. It's not going to stop. Um, it's going to take forever to catch up, from what I understand and what I've read. It's not a four-year or six-year fix. It's not a 10-year fix. We're here. We've lived here. I've lived here 25 years, um, so we've lived here a lot longer, and um, it's not going to change. Um, if the board is supervisor, or if you put that limit on it, it won't pass. The polling numbers are real, but it won't pass. Um, I forgot my other point. Citizens oversight. It's very similar to school bonds and school parcel taxes that are here uh, locally in Tennessee School District. Um, and 
so they are, it's important to have, it's important to have representation. Um, and I think that the efforts that have been put forth, if you've been reading the papers and tracking the progress of this um, project, uh, they've done a lot to try to make that compromise. Nobody's getting everything they want. This is what I've read. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Yeah, um, my name's Kevin. I live in uh, Upper Lucas Valley Road on Heidelberry, so I'm a homeowner here. Um, and I just wanted to just kind of emphasize my support for this. Um, you know, I haven't lost insurance. We haven't had any fires right by the house, luckily. But, um, you know, we're not very far from Nevada. We're not very far from West Marin. We're not very far from Sleepy Hollow. And if the community as a whole is not getting together and, and removing these fuels and doing this work, um, you know, I think the weather like it's about to change right now, evidently, and we're going to get the wind, the slightest thing is going to come over our hills and come to our valley as well. So I'm very supportive of this countywide effort, um, and I hope you guys will vote in favor of it. I feel like the um, Citizens Oversight Committee and the, um, the items that have been, have been added to take a look at this measure every few years to make sure it's heading in the right direction. I think those are good backstops. Um, so just wanted to give my support. Thanks for coming. Stephen? Uh, yeah, first of all, I want to uh, thank Chief Gray and Chief Neil. I, Chief Gray, I have the utmost respect for him um, as a, a fire official. However, uh, my comments are going to be focused. Uh, well, I. I, I want to focus comments on a couple of things. First of all, with regards to the lesson learns of the Santa Rosa fires, uh, I mailed or, or emailed everybody uh, an article from the LA Times, and they had a very, uh, uh, they were very critical uh, of all the wildfire clearance as if it, uh, uh, wildland clearance as if it's a panacea. What they learned up in Santa Rosa was those fire breaks were, were, uh, did not do what they were supposed to do. But, so we need to, I, I still think we need to clear our lands, but we, we need to do, go about it intelligently. The other thing is, how, how many agencies do we have? 17? We literally have 17 chiefs. 17 chiefs and not too many Indians. I believe we should uh, reject this until we have structural change to our county uh, 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 fire services. And I would think someone of uh, Chief Gray's caliber would be an excellent choice to lead that effort. But that's not what's on the plan here. MIRA, we, we voted for a tax for MIRA. We voted for a tax for paramedic tax. Unfortunately, the fire service has, uh, uh, they, they can raise taxes, but they, uh, the implementation of the plans are sometimes lagging. So I, I really question, uh, question the ability to get this done. They presented you a plan where 80% of the dollars we send them will come back here. Well, I've got a, a counter proposal. 100% of the plan, uh, uh, funds get spent locally, that we have a local measure to address some of these concerns. Now, we all know that pensions are a huge issue, and unfortunately, it's the uh, public safety employees that um, are really burdening us, and that's why I say the first thing we need to do is look at the restructuring and deployment of uh, services as opposed to setting up a new agency, which will be a new fiefdom that basically will lock into place the fiefdoms that already exist. The structure of the parcel tax is also questionable. We're concerned about affordable housing, and I would like you to look at this because actually this, the, uh, res the renters are really paying the highest rates per unit, and they will pay it through more uh, rent. Um, and the unimproved parcels, it's hardly anything. A half acre or more, it's 150 bucks a parcel. We have you know, big tracts of land, hundreds of acres. Um, I believe that uh, this is not ready for prime time. It doesn't deserve your support. It's raw. It's unfinished. Um, 
it's a good idea. We do live in a risky area. That's a consequence of our climate and our, our, uh, our geography. Uh, we do need to address some of these issues. We should address some of these issues, but let's do it the right way. Let's not set up an agency that has power to create bonds, to create new laws, and basically uh, uh, be out of control of local voters to, to, uh, to, to manage. Thank you for your opinion, Stephen. Um, I'm going to ask you one more question. I just want to make sure I understand. If this uh, goes on the ballot uh, March of 2020, um, it'll, the tax taxes that come in will start to flow in in, say, November of that year. Am I um, correct that the county may be in a position to pre-fund this so that if it does pass, we can get going on it right away? That's correct. It is? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Um, having heard from the public, having discussed it here, I would be ready to hear a motion. I'll move that the Green Community Services District authorizes our president of the board of directors to authorize MCSD participation in the joint exercise of powers agreement to participate in the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority and request the County of Marin place a partial tax measure on the ballot. Thank you, Director Mayla. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, do we need to discuss any further? I want to One other thing. Is there still wiggle room? In other words, if there are, are there still, is there still time for any sort of compromise on this, or is this it? Well, at this point, what's before us, this is it. But I, you know. Let's just say you've got to be open to the possibilities. Yeah. We're, we're, in, we're, is not, we're, we're the tail wagging the dog here. We're not going to change the language. You know, even though some of what has been proposed, I think, has some merit. And I'm just wondering if other organizations are taking a look at that. And there may be something, there could some be minor change. I think I'm you know, open to the possibilities. Uh -huh. Well, based on the meeting I was in with the CAO and the, that group is that no, no more changes. We cannot continue to tinker with it because we're halfway through everybody adopting that uh, as amended. I think and, we're, by tonight, and, we're halfway through. So and, that's it, and again, um, a lot of meetings and a lot of feedback. Not everybody got everything they wanted. And um, the okay. group feels that they have... Um, Okay, well, thank Got you as much her. as they can. And I think more, to, my point is, is that this is going to evolve, as will the needs of the programming to ensure you know, safety countywide. So in, in a larger sense, I think you know, we're at a point in time where we need to move forward. Mm -hmm. we need to, you know, the, the dialogue is great, but we need action. Okay. And that's what the community expects, and that's as your you know, fire chief, what we really need to have in place. Yes, understood. Okay, so this is a time critical thing. And, yes. Uh, we need to put up or shut up. I think so. Okay. I think this is a very critical program and something that we should uh, definitely support, irrespective of all the fine tuning that would come over time. I, I still hope that the necessity of the measure passing yes. uh, will keep the doors open. To, to hear public input. Um, having said that, I think um, there is nobody in the room that would deny uh, the value of this program to Marin Island, but also to Marin County in general. And I only can hope that this JPA will lead the way um, not only for this new program that will focus solely on prevention, but also for the fire department to find together and form one fire department that would be efficient as it is, but um, more cost efficient. Yes. Um, so um, I'll just call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so the motion passes.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chiefs, and thank you, everybody from the public. Please come by more often. We need the support. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on to item E2, which is the potential creation of a district-wide plan. Um, uh, I guess I'll just introduce the subject matter since I was the one who came up with this brilliant idea. Um, I trust everybody who read the memo um, that I produced. And, um, the idea is basically to give us a sense of direction and goal to, to strive towards not only reacting to the increasing cost of pensions but um, or, or the um, you know OPEP and I think this was a tremendous effort that really enlightened us um, but maybe figure out where we want to be in 10 years how do we want to look like as a district um, the questions for the board today are, um, should we even engage in a strategic plan at this point? Because that might not be an opportune time for one reason or another that you know you may see and I cannot, but would be convinced because I'm a reasonable person. Um, the second item would be, you know, if we decide to um, proceed, should we do it by ourselves or should we uh, leave it to a professional who would um, probably make it more efficient and, and productive? And third uh, was, um, you know, if we are engaging, um, would it, should it be five years, ten years of a timeline? Uh, what should be the subject matter areas which were, um, example, were, was given below? and. Um, what would be some elements of the process? Again, some of my ideas are contained in the memo, but um, it's all open for discussion, and one way or the other will not be offended. So, <laughs> Bill, why don't you start? Okay. Uh, I think we are strategically planning currently. We've been doing this for the pensions and the OPEB, and that's the main overriding concerns that we have as a district fiscally. Uh, other than that, you're looking long-term strategically planning. Do we want to keep the park correct? Do we want to keep the park correct? We know the answer to one. We're not sure about the other. We know that we want to get rid of the fire department. Uh, all encompassing in the di as a district entity. Because um, I mean, gradually, especially now with the JPA moving in the direction that I think it's headed, all the fire departments, it's, it's going to pull those all together too. So I, I think we're going to, what's going to be left here is a park and rec and what's going to be uh, street lights. Yeah, so um, I, I, strategically, I think the writing is kind of on the wall. And if you're thinking <coughs> five years to ten years, I, I think that's what we're going to do up with there. Fair enough. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. No worries. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm here for. <coughs> yeah. Um, first of all, thank you for thinking about the future. Um, like something else we're going to go through tonight. Um, I also, over the last few years, have been uh, gratified to see that our staff is thinking about the future and doing it in a <clears throat> in a quantitative manner um, to look at capital purchases, capital reserves, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that and the you know, the obvious analysis we've been doing about our pension liabilities and OPEP are two of the strategic um, initiatives that we've already gone through and are, are bearing some fruit. Um, I'm not entirely sure, um, of the, well, first of all, when I think of strategy, and I come from a non-public environment, I come from a private environment, where strategies are predominantly for companies 
or entities that are in competition with other entities and they, they see an enormous amount of external threats and this and that, maybe that strategy in order to you know, thrive in that environment. Um, I think we don't have, I think all of our threats are internal. So, <laughs> so I, I feel that um, there are some items here that I think we could, we could discuss and others I'm not quite sure I understand why. Um, for example, role of the board of directors. I think that should be sort of um, fairly obvious, but um, we can certainly have that discussion. Um, and I think that there are some of these items that we can have a discussion right here by ourselves without any sort of, um, you know, uh, professional advice because I'm not sure that they're necessarily, that there's a strategic path for them, okay? Um, so. The other, the other comment I will make is um, I'd like to discuss this again when we're a full board and see what the others have to say about it. But at this point in time, um, I'm unclear of the value of having a strategic plan Thank you. exercise. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that some of the items you would want to discuss um, as a board, aside from if sure. not within the framework of, of the plan, then um, separately, if, if you could maybe send an email to Eric listing these and sure. we can see if we can put it sure. in the... Sure, um, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. All right, thank you. That was very efficient. Excellent. Let's move on. Um, oh, sorry. Um, public comment on item E2. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to commend uh, Isabella for presenting uh, the concept of strategic plans and forward thinking. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, however, I, I do see a, a few flaws in what she's presented. First of all, it's among yourselves. Now, in the long term, there'll be movement on the, the board uh, through retirements or whatever. And so uh, to just do it among yourselves seems to be uh, well, anti-democratic. Um, there's a concept, and I think Jeff is a New Englander too, but in New England uh, we have the annual town meeting where such strategic uh, plans are discussed, budgets are gone over, and uh, it's a chance for the board to stand in front of their uh, rep people they represent uh, to explain their ideas um, also, we have something called elections, which is another good way to uh, articulate those ideas. Nevertheless, um, you know, the fundamental concept that, uh, that uh, Isabella has presented is well worthwhile. I don't think we need an outside facilitator. Um, that's, it really, you're, you're just missing like one huge participant, and that is the public. And I don't mean just me or whoever shows up, a handful of people, but actually making a, a concerted effort to get as many people here uh, to discuss the future of the district. We will have lots more changes in the future and such a dialogue will be uh, very useful for you to guide you during the year, once a year in the spring prior to adopting the budget. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, just a point of clarification, that was by no means um, was supposed to be a um, topic that would be discussed only within the board. That was just to get the ball rolling, get the juices flowing, and um, all stakeholders would be naturally involved in the plan. But again, um, it may not necessarily um, have to be labeled as such for it to somehow be happening already. That's kind of the message I received from our fellow board members. Um, anybody else from the public? No. Um, okay, so we will move to item E3, which is the capital expenditure forecast and financial reserve planning needs. With that, I'll hand it off to Eric. Yeah, this is just an informational update. Uh, was, uh, Kevin built it for the administrative calendar. We placed this to happen in the fall and in the spring. Uh, and obviously, it's uh, looked at quite often by staff. 
uh, especially as we start getting into the budget cycles and looking at uh, refreshing and making sure that, okay, where do we stand? These obviously are best guesses on uh, uh, several of the capital assets at play. Uh, Luke and I did sit down and go through the park and rec uh, sheet recently, um, the fire sheet, uh, not quite as recently, but it's also been reviewed uh, and I have been reviewed again this past time and sat with the captains during some periods of transition as we were going through the last budget. Um, so obviously taking a moment to be able to sit with the chief, but at this point, um, there's no action on this item. This is more of an informational item uh, just to share with the board and the public uh, that staff uses as a capital investment planning tool, um, especially as we're looking at what our financial needs are going to be into the future in terms of our uh, uh, larger fixed assets. Amazon A, setting aside reserves. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have seen it before, it's not news to us. No, that's true. Um, I have a question. Is the uh, pool plastering, is that, I mean, is that scheduled? It's not scheduled. Uh, we're looking at it in this fiscal period. We are. Uh, that was approved by the board, but as Luke, uh, especially Luke, and, and I work with uh, and talking to other people and vendors, we are also getting some other opinions on uh, by not being quite as bad of a shape as your initial opinion got. And we've seen much worse pools running for much longer. And while it certainly would need some patching, uh, some of which we might even be able to do ourselves, it's going to need it in a few years. It might wind up happening this year. Um, but if it isn't absolutely needed, my opinion would be that you wait until it is needed, as that's only going to extend the life of it again that much longer. Right. If it's needed now, we do it now. But when people who would, are coming to us who would make money off of this job and are telling us, uh, I'm not sure that you're in quite a bad shape as you think you are. That's uh, a good sign. Uh, that raises an eyebrow yeah. or two. Um, hmm, interesting, okay. So we're, we're constantly monitoring it. And if it needs to be done, obviously, we will do what we need to do to get it into, uh, uh, so it'll be open and ready for next pool season if that needs to happen. We do have several sample RFPs that we do launch that out there. And then the kitchen cabinets, counters, and flooring. Is the flooring part of the overall center? No. So that Only was, that within was the little kitchen world. Kitchen yeah. world. So, um, and that was, uh, we, that was not a fully approved expenditure for this fiscal year. I had put a placeholder in the budget for it, um, so that way it was marked in there, and I think I put 54,000 yeah. for it, and this was just for, uh, mostly work that we could do uh, as far as installing cabinets and things along those lines, but the, bringing in people to do flooring, uh, you know, the basic uh, industrial grade laminate type or tile flooring, uh, as well as countertops are the big ones that we would need outside work getting done. Cool. Yeah, but those two were pitched as, if we do the pool, I'm not going to come back and recommend we do the kitchen as well. But if we can defer the pool, then we could. Quite possibly, yeah. Of course. I mean, that's one other, of the other things. Other things come up. Sure. You know, $50,000 storm drain project that wasn't right. quite and for there, so, That's yeah. right. But this does, this tool does lend itself to that kind of thinking, i.e. we've got back feedback from, um, you know, pool vendors that we're not in jeopardy. We could probably push this out a year or two years. What could we achieve that you know might right. be right. Um, a little bit more critical? And well, and I invite Luke to speak to yeah. anything else on the pool. Uh, he's been much more in depth on some of those conversations than I have as well. So yeah, no, I think uh, uh, it's uh, I totally agree with with how Eric framed that. Um, as far as uh, the work we've done, one thing that one of the um, people that came out and looked at our our pool did mention is that there is some work to be done around the pool would be much lower expense, but some of the deck um, work needs to be kind of addressed in the cracks and things to be addressed. But, um, and then you talk more about what's going on in the equipment room as well, kind of the longevity of, of, the, of some of the gear there. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a specific question, but. I'm just curious, is there any reason why we still have the Colorado pads in the deck? The only reason we still have the Colorado pads on the deck is that taking them out would leave holes in the deck uh, that we would then have to fill with. Okay, so they, but they're not causing any problem in and of themselves. Uh, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure exactly what the uh, what's underneath the pad itself and how mm -hmm. and how the wiring is and all that. Okay, I just not it comes out of but yeah, um, I'd say if we did uh, uh, address some of the cracks and reseal um, the 
the ceiling around the edge of the pool, we would probably look at um, what it would take to take those out, fill the holes. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. No big deal. Thank you. Um, my thought about the flooring in the community center, I know you mentioned that there's only one last refinish left. Um, next time we are redoing the floor, could we maybe look at another material that would be that would have more longevity? Absolutely, yeah. So the um, when this floor was done, I think it was about five years ago, we had it completely a brand new floor put in. Right. Uh, there's some debate about whether that was seeing it or and um, the logic when that was done was, well, the first version of that lasted us 30, over 30 years. That service pretty well, did sort of the same thing again. Um, you know, the nature of what's happening in the community center has changed a lot in, right. in the near future. So um, talking to the company that came in and did the sanding and refinishing of the floor, they gave um, me a, a whole list of recommendations and specific places to go check out the floors that they've done and um, for the wear and tear on our uh, floor in the decades that are, that are going on um, did have recommendations for a different some different styles there's a lot of options so it's not like you should do this it's like oh well this is this benefit this is this benefit definitely a conversation but we should have um, you know th this last sanding and uh, we'll, we'll still be able to put more coats on the floor of the the, the ceiling the, Finish, but um, there's not anything left to sand away at this point. Right. This should we take good care of it, and they gave us some new products to use for cleaning and etc. We we could get um, you know seven to ten years out of this oh. floor, uh, depending on what's going on in there. That wasn't a guarantee. They didn't put that in writing. It may be uh, closer to five, but it all depends on you know what, what we're doing on it. So yeah. Um, so that's basically you know that's a, our best guess as of you know. Whenever you look at it last said, week or whatever, but this this is a fluid document, and as the wear and tear happens on um, on our infrastructure, obviously this plan is adjusted and needs addressed on most urgent basis. Exactly. Uh, but that that tool is invaluable because we are now actively involved in in capital improvement planning and and put money aside for such things. Sure. So, um, any comments from the public, Stephen? Yes. Um, well, first of all, it's once again, it's good to look forward, and I'm glad that you're looking forward. However, it seems like um, you're not listening to what the public is asking for. Uh, you know, uh, how are we doing for our senior population? We were supposed to have a, a a study, I guess, on pickleball, which I don't, I guess it's a complicated study, but but it's a few uh, stripes on the pickleball courts. Uh, we had asked for uh, park benches, which had not gotten installed. We've asked for restoration. What we have gotten is uh, the removal of the nature trail, um, and it just seems to me that you know, you can do a lot of good in the community, but you can, you're can you limited to the amount of good that you have with the, the three people on the board because you're not actually listening to the public or soliciting uh, information from the public. Measure A has very specific uh, uh, goals in mind, and I don't see any of these things really meeting them. These are just general capital goods uh, uh, capital purchases. They're not restoring. Um, they're they're not restoring the environment. They're not creating more recreational opportunities. They're uh, not uh, providing more accessibility. You know, Linda. Uh, I'll talk about later tonight. She's uh, asked you to uh, for uh, uh, a handrail to come into the community. She's concerned about tripping hazards. You know, this is. This is part of what we should be be concerned with uh, with our Measure A funds. So um, look forward, but don't forget that you have a public that may have different opinions on this. Lastly, I want just want to say one thing about the the uh, kitchen remodel. Um, 
you know, I gave you, there was, I think, Granite Expo, that's what it is, in Emeryville. I got a quote for 12500 You decided to uh, reject that quote. Um, that was including granite countertops. Uh, I encourage you, uh, if you're going to refinish over here, to actually get in the car uh, and, and get a, a quote from them because they're very affordable and a lot of builders use them. And uh, if you're not doing that, uh, well, shame on you because because we could use that extra money for additional things around the park. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Jeff, you Uh, Everything we can do, and what are the 
legal and technical steps needed to achieve all of those. And once all of that fact finding and research is done, it'll be hiked up the chain to the perspective of that governing bodies, including just for the Council of Santa Fe, as well as the Board of Supervisors, as those are the three jurisdictions that have responsibility for fire protection in this area. So that's basically a presentation of any and all options possible? That's and, the goal. And we haven't had our initial meeting, but that is my understanding of what we are trying to accomplish. Throwing it on the wall and seeing what's the next thing. Just the... Brainstorming it, it, session. Is it as remotely possible, and what are the legal and technical steps to get it done? That's all there is at this point in time. And then uh, yeah. back to the uh, facility replacement project, um, the County of Marin will be conducting all notice and communications. Correct. Yeah, the design review is a county process. Uh, they and that's open to the public? Of course. Okay. They'll handle all noticing, all communications, uh, and it is in their hands. This point. The district has done what the district can do and has gone through an extensive uh, uh, process with it. It is a county uh, like process at this point. Uh, I apologize to fellow directors for taking first stab at questions. <laughs> so, Jeffrey Director. Uh, I just, I would just keep out of curiosity. We had. Um, the heavy rains, was that two or three years ago? And last year. Have we heard anything from FEMA in the last six, 12 months? Regarding uh, reimbursement? Oh, that's what you're talking about from the 2017. Is when yeah, that occurred. Two years ago. Uh, I have heard actually not too long ago, that this was a couple few months ago, the only project that is outstanding within the FEMA world at this point is the work that was completed at Greenstone Fire Road. Um, Ponte, we pulled out um, because of all the work that the county is doing uh, and a couple of the other projects uh, were deemed ineligible. So those ultimately were, were pulled and some had work done to them uh, that wasn't compliant with FEMA. And so as a result, those had to be uh, withdrawn as well, but the only one outstanding is uh, Queenstone, and it's about uh, I think about a ten thousand uh, dollar outlay at this point. Queenstone is all done. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, all the improvements and all the everything that can be done has been done. It's Ponte uh, Fire Ponte Single Track Road has been really adjusted. I don't know if you've been out there lately. Um, they are doing, the county is doing a lot. It's pretty impressive, the size of the crews and the machinery and oh, everything yeah. that they're doing. It's garnering a lot of really positive attention. Uh, it's it's going to be, a, a, when it is said and done, it's going to be a remarkable project. Thank you. Um, comments from the public, Stephen? Yeah, first of all, uh, I want to point out that Eric didn't uh, provide me with the manager's report in, in the uh, full packet that I had requested. So I'm uh, going a little blind here. Um, uh, After the spreadsheets, there should be in there too. Uh, yeah, they're not. So I, I'm sure you meant it to include. Well, I, I actually think I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, right there. That's it. Oh, right you are. It's on the back. OK. Um, so uh, actually, I have a question uh, concerning the park maintenance facility. It's uh, represented that everything is complete. However, the story poles are not installed. What is the, uh, the disposition of the story poles? Will they be installed? Uh, when I can find a vendor to install them. They, they will be installed any time when we need to install it. I don't think we're there yet, correct? Uh, I'm actually putting, I've put out informal notices looking for contractors to do the work. Okay, so from my understanding, uh, with talking with Michelle Levinson at the uh, Marin County uh, Department, that the, the package is not considered complete until those story poles are installed. We think those story poles are really important. You haven't really had uh, a public forum on this. We did have one in the beginning. We discussed four possible scenarios. You went with the fifth scenario and hired Bill Hansel. You promised to involve us. You promised to tell us how much it would cost. We haven't had either one of those things. 
So the public is really, really blind on this. It's very, uh, it's disturbing that you guys have become more secretive as an agency. Um, and I think you're making a mistake because uh, that uh, project is one of the most expensive, probably the most expensive capital expenditure uh, uh, for the district uh, in, in many, many years. And um, so I, I'd like to see you uh, really do uh, honest outreach. I'm asking you to hold the public forum uh, once those uh, story poles are installed. Um, I, I'm going to reiterate again, I've actually said this for months at a time, months, but you actually have uh, a problem with your, your there's the, the movement of vehicles is going to be impossible on that site. It's going to require much more space than you think it's going to require. And I can sh show that to you. I tr attempted to do that with a model. I can do that again, but you know, 22 foot vehicle and a 21 foot trailer and big piles of uh, landscaping waste, you're not going to be able to do the basic functions of the landscaping department there. So I don't, you're, you're, I've called it a white elephant. I believe it's a white elephant. And unfortunately, that will be a very costly uh, adventure for the district, although I'm sure uh, Bill doesn't mind uh, creating a, a new building. Um, Anyhow, lots to discuss on that. Um, I'm all one other thing, and, and I guess we'll get to this later. Um, but I have not heard uh, any substantive uh, uh, comments or concern about uh, public safety uh, here. Uh, we've got. Outsider, outsiders have been identified as the, the culprits, but we don't know which outsiders. Uh, alcohol is involved in some of the culprits, but we don't actually have any strategies in place. And quite frankly, it's it's actually appalling. I I have a couple daughters. I know a couple. You have a couple daughters. I certainly wouldn't have wanted them to uh, have the experience that that poor girl had in April. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't more serious, but but it was plenty serious. It was it was a major uh, felony that that occurred here, and uh, uh, you're investing in a, a police officer to intimidate me into being quiet. I'm not going to be quiet about stuff like this, okay? And I really ask you to invest our resources wisely in. Um, security uh, apparatus for the park. Thank you, Stephen. Just so um, I can rebut your uh, claim to us not, uh, to us being secret, uh, the, all the documentation has been on our website for how many months now? Thank you. I mean, at least half a year. There's all actually the documentation. A, a link, there's a link, are you talking about the shed? Yeah. And there is a, a link to the county planning page. Okay. On our website, where all of the plans have been uploaded and so on. And so, so, just for the record, there is a link on our website to the county's uh, page that has been established solely for the purpose of public information. And the second point you made about the um, uh, plan to uh, mitigate uh, likelihood of uh, incidences like we had here from happening again. This is actually a work in progress and has been discussed at the Park and Rec Commission meeting and we will be um, talking about it or you can see it in the draft minutes of uh, Park and Rec Commission meeting. So um, that's also an invalid point. So moving on to... So I wait a second. I, you're not really actually supposed to rebut my points. I would like to rebut what you have just said, because you've actually, uh, you've distorted the truth there, Isabella. Isabella, you've distorted the truth. I would like 
a opportunity to speak. May I have an opportunity to speak uh, to, to your points? Are you going to just simply ignore the fact that a girl was raped here and that the, this district kept it hidden, secret, and all of you knew about this? You've kept it secret from the public. You also canceled out. You also you also stopped renting the facility. So we have we have, our revenue has suffered. Is there going to be a, um, is there going to be a, 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 someone who is let go because we our revenue is down? Submit to bullying. I will not submit to you I will compromising my free you. speech. And I'm not going to step out. If you would like to. No, just listen to me for just a second, please. Sorry, you're on, you're on I'm YouTube. On cam camera. Yeah, I. Okay, let's just get. I, I do want to talk to you because I think you have some very valid points. But let's just get through the meet this meeting. I, I look. I, I understand it, but I you know they do not conduct meetings in a in a uh, according to law okay. and convention. Actually, in all and other there meetings, there are places where you can bring that up. But well, I, I unfortunately I have to bring it up to the DA or I have to sue them. Well, and I am not. In in the meantime, I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna step outside and no. record these. Right. events because that's exactly what they're, they're doing. They're playing schoolyard bullies, being mean, so I don't want to be here. I actually don't want to be here, okay. but I, but I, unfortunately I have no choice because if I want to participate in my local exactly. government, as I have a right, and I, I, I know you understand that, yes. I, I'm going to stay here, okay. and I'm not going to, I'm not going to back down. Okay. No. So, last, last, last meeting, Isabella uh, slandered me twice by calling me a liar in public. Now she is a, that's an act I, I could I could I could sue her for that okay I don't want to what I do want is I want us to have civility and I've asked for that every single time and so yeah my back you know, my hair on my back is up and I'm upset but I will not back down so if you need to to escalate no one's going to ask us. Okay. Let's get through this so that we can talk about what we can do in the future. Okay. That's fair enough. I appreciate that. If we could just um, wrap things up for tonight, I think, as soon as possible. We have two approvals that we have to, we have to um, pay attention to. Okay, sure. So since we're all back in the room, we'll resume the meeting and uh, we are still on item F1, which is the agreement between the County of Marin and the Marin Community Services District for Fire Protection and Emergency Services to County Service Area 13. The following item would be uh, to the juvenile okay. hall side. Both of these items are an annual action item for the board. Um, Eric, do you... Want to add anything? Uh, I think you pretty well covered it. I will say, uh, again, these are annual renewals. They're based on very set formulas that have been used for many years. And I will say that both agreements were approved by the County Board of Supervisors in the meeting this morning. Uh, I will also say I do have one small typo, but it is non substantive where uh, there is the date that says 2019 on two areas, or I should say 2020. Uh, and I've already talked to the uh, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer, and he wouldn't too worried about that either. It's just about what it's going to do. It's pretty obvious what it should be. Excellent. Yeah. Questions from the board? I have no questions, sir. Public comment on item F1? Hearing no. no. Uh, may I hear a motion? A motion to approve the agreement between the county of Marin and Marin Community Services District for Protection and Emergency Services to County Service Area 13. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item F2 is the same kind of agreement for the juvenile hall side. Um, no issues from the board, public comment. Hearing none. Uh, motion, please. Bill Shea makes a motion. Second. Second. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, item F3 are the draft minutes of Fire Commission meeting of October 1st. Um, it's a review item. Are there any questions or comments from the board? I'm just glad that the uh, request for bad news was just adjourned. Public comment on draft minutes of Fire Commission meetings. Meeting yes. October 1st. Uh, Go ahead, this is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, uh, the comment is uh, there's not enough information here. We don't, the fire district spends uh, basically half our funds here um, and uh, we have absolutely no record of it. I requested at least notes for, from uh, uh, Eric and he said he didn't have to do it by law. And, you know, once again, I, I, I think um, you're kind of missing the point of a public agency. A public agency is responsible, not just to me, but to the, to the community at large. And, uh, and uh, you're operating the fire commission as if it was a secret boys club. Um, we, we love our firefighters. We want uh, the best of them. We are in Marinwood probably, uh, I'm guessing we're one of the most heavily burdened um, districts for, uh, uh, for, for what we pay per household for fire services in Marin County. And um, we, we really do need to know more about what's going on in the fire department. So I'm urging you to uh, adopt a policy so you don't have to rely on vague notes, and we can really understand what's going on with our district. Um, and it might be a good thing, because we've got good people, so. That's it. Okay, and the uh, item of five, the date of next prior commission meeting is November 5th, to which, oh, so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> F4 is the Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. I apologize to you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just a couple of items to add to uh, the written report. Uh, we did have a well attended and nice uh, celebration of life for retired uh, Fire Chief Jay Newhouse, who passed away uh, from cancer. Uh, anyway, very, very nice uh, ceremony. Good to see a lot of people. He had a significant impact on creating the volunteer program, which obviously produced hundreds of firefighters over the years. So and that's a program we continue today. So we're uh, proud of that one. Nice to support his uh, family. I wanted to mention that there's a Red Cross program uh, called Sound the Alarm. And the Red Cross uh, volunteers actually uh, install uh, new 10-year life uh, smoke detectors uh, in homes free of charge. And it's available to the Marinwood community. So we're going to publicize that effort and then get involved with some volunteers to assist the Red Cross to do that uh, locally, as well as having these uh, detectors available from uh, Engine 58. I wanted to mention that. And um, finally, you see you're wearing pink patches uh, all month long. And then from October 21st to the 26th, all uh, Marin County firefighters will be wearing pink as well. So you commonly see the pink t-shirts, but so between uh, uh, those, those two dates that week, uh, everyone had, had support of um, breast cancer awareness. So uh, thank you very much. And again, thank you for your support with the Greenwood Wildfire, uh, uh, Marin County uh, Wildfire JPA. Thank you. Good question. Yes. Are these just smoke detectors or also CO2? These are uh, only smoke detectors. Okay. They're not combination devices. Okay. Thank you. Can I add one thing to this report, if you don't mind? Sure. I don't know what shape or form, chief officer. Um, 
He mentioned the Spiderhouse uh, oh, stuff, okay. the Public Safety Foundation yeah. board. Uh, I think I've been in a previous meeting. Uh, a group of firefighters, uh, Stephen Perea, and I know Ryan Bracken, I believe, and uh, Otis Smith had applied for a grant. They did get awarded. Uh, it was valued at approximately the number of 17795 They actually were able to use those funds uh, and have purchased the uh, three uh, new and uh, state-of-the-art uh, thermal imaging cameras, which are very useful for them to have. The uh, point of my bringing this up also is that uh, the local firehouse subs in Nevada will be doing an award recognition on October 23rd. I will send you all information for it. It will happen during the middle of the day. The 23rd is a Wednesday. Uh, I will be attending, uh, obviously, on behalf of the district. Uh, uh, and I believe we'll have the engine, we'll be bringing the, the engine down for that. And it'll be just a little PR more for firehouse subs to say, this is what we do with our foundation and all the local firefighters. Cool. So, uh, October 23rd at 1.30 p.m. I will see you all at the uh, You should be available. You are obviously welcome. Thanks. Um, Chief, um, Silly thing. Uh, can we just? Yes. Uh, I, I can't really read it. So can I don't even have just like the, the easy, simple one. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The color version. Yeah. Public comment. Chief Officer Report. Hearing none. Um, item five. The date of next fire commission meeting is November fifth. Moving on to item one. Draft minutes of uh, Park and Recreation Commission meeting of September 24th. Any questions from the board? Okay, just reviewing. Nothing. Um, are there expiring terms? Yes. Yes, plenty. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, there's four commissioners. Two of them are will be expiring. Plus, there's another seat that has never been filled. Uh, two of them won't be expiring. So if the two. Uh, at least one of the two doesn't decide that if one of the two decides to reapply, then we will still have a quorum. If they don't and other members of the public don't, then we won't have a quorum uh, for a PNR commission until such time as we can find a third member. So therefore there we uh, have no reason to meet. Uh, so you want to sit there and talk? Well, they, we can still hear that coming from. Well we can meet and uh, I, I we'll see what happens with the commissioners. Uh, okay, so at this point, you have no. They still have time to. Uh, yes, uh, November first. November first. Yeah, and it'll be on the November fourth meeting. Okay. We should be verbal, but we should be okay. okay. Time will tell. Public involvement. All right. All right. Uh, public comment on uh, draft minutes of Park and Recreation Commission meeting. Um, minutes. <laughs> Item G1, draft minutes of Park and Recreation Commission meeting minutes of September 24th. Um, uh, I have a comment on that. It's a very please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I did watch the meeting and it was quite interesting to me. Um, I mean, and Isabella, you were there, uh, so you know what actually occurred. There was an hour discussion on rental policy, um, which was quite interesting, but it is completely missing from these minutes. And, you know, what is the point? Are you, do you not want the public to know what you're thinking? I mean, really, this is, this is, uh, this is actually, I mean, if someone drowned in the pool, would you close the pool uh, for six months while you uh, trimmed up policy? I, I, I just think that, you know, you're, you're way, way off base, and you've got to bring uh, these issues, these policy issues, before the community. Um, why are you hiding this? I, it, it really doesn't make sense to me unless you're trying to avoid embarrassment and uh, some other things. I. I know everyone here is horrified by the the attempted rape as I am, uh, and I don't I don't want to minimize that. But I, I the point is is that there are things that we can do to improve security, to 
uh, minimize the effects of these things and they have not been vetted in a public forum and you're not you're not even making it public by the minutes that you're using. Item G2 is the uh, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. Um, are there any questions for the, from the board? Some guys stuff coming up this morning. Well, <clears throat> you know, I'll say Friday's a big day, last day of the full season, and it's a big Halloween Harvest Festival, so uh, staff's going hard on both uh, keeping the pool staff the rest of this week and uh, for our vacant maintenance to uh, worker in this working position. Received some applications, uh, some resumes, and we're um, hoping to be conducting interviews by the end of the month. So Thank you. Um, any questions from the public? Stephen? Yeah, well, first thing I would like to do, uh, the pool is beautiful. I know Jeff can attest to it because he swims there as often as I do. Um, and I, I want to thank Luke and his staff. And Stephanie, who doesn't talk a lot, but obviously she, she gets things done, um, uh, pool manager. Um, they, uh, and also I want to say that I received a report that the, the water fountains are now clear and so things have improved. Um, we had the car show recently and I, I'm guessing that we didn't charge uh, for the car show, but um, we maybe should have because we had some damage to our facilities. At the at very least, they should have an insurance requirement. So basically, we're subsidizing. The other thing is, is that we had a uh, porta potty that had a sign on it, men only, it's really gross inside, or something to that effect, which is awful. You know, we have women in the park. We, we, they're, they're, that should have been taken care of. In fact, the Alliance Club should have been required more, uh, should have been required with the, the, the facility there to have porta potties on staff. And also, uh, I didn't make it during the event, if they were serving beer, there should be uh, some sort of security present to make sure things don't get out of hand. Um, the, um, you know, I brought up drinking in the park before, um, and I just want to point out that both uh, local community members and what you term outsiders drink in our park, and there's absolutely nothing being done about that. Um, I don't, I'm not a teetotaler, but I do think that uh, when the guys have three keg parties, uh, and are peeing in the bushes, that's totally out of line. And I do think that it's gotten gradually and gradually more of a party spot. So that needs to be reined in. We need to, we need to be a little nice, kinder to the neighbors. People have to walk by there. I would rather not guys drink in front of the children and walk down through that area and ride bikes and what have you. But but, um, you know, we do have a rule, no alcoholic beverages in the park, and you're not, uh, not enforcing that rule, and I, I, I think that you should for the quality of life, the quality of this park. Uh, we love the park, you know, we love our community, and let's, let's stay ahead of these things and not let them become problems that uh, are much more difficult to do address in the future. Thank you, Stephen. Next, our uh, next uh, Park and Rec Commission meeting takes place on October 22nd, um, and so we move to item H, which are the board member items of interest and requests for future agenda items. Okay. I have Two items, I'd like to thank the fire department for obtaining the equipment grant. That was tremendous and super helpful and um, kudos. As well as make an announcement that um, 
Odia Green stepped down from her presidency for personal reasons, and as the vice president, I will try to fill her shoes for um, the remainder of the year until the next president is elected in December. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? So, well, hang, hang on for a second. I have an opportunity to speak. Um, first of all, uh, um, are you preventing me from speaking? It's well, I, I understand you wrote that, but I do believe I have, uh, under uh, the law, an opportunity to speak on every item pr uh, presented. It, it won't take too long. Um, you know, the most generous and kind, and I, I do mean the most generous benefactor of this district, uh, is not here tonight, and she suffered an accident. She'll be recovering. Uh, she is in recovery right now. And uh, I think it would be great for the board uh, to muster up uh, the goodwill to send her a note, uh, goodwill, goodwill, uh, get well note, um, and that of course is Linda Barnello. Um, and uh, the other thing is, uh, in our future agenda, we need, we we actually need to talk about. Uh, uh, the maintenance shed, which we have not really had a public dialogue on this. You guys have, you know, presented your, your clipped responses, but you actually not engaged the dialogue. We were, we presented uh, to a petition of 200 people and they were asking for uh, a public meeting. You actually said that you were going to do this and it's never been done. And I, I think you are pulling the wool over our eyes and uh, it's it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You're going to own this. You're going to own this. Um, date of the next regular board meeting is November 12, 2019, to which everybody is, as always, um, welcome and invited. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. I hope you're not 80 years old with a broken hip and no one cares. Yeah, no, thank you guys.